Hello folks, and today we're going to cover vertical velocity problems again, this time when the object starts off of the ground. So let's begin. So again, here's a review of our formulas from the previous video. <clears throat> uh, vertical velocity is when the object is on the ground. Okay, now again, as we noted before, okay, is the when we're given feet, we use negative 16 in front of our formula, and when we're given meters, we're using negative 4.9. Now let's quickly review our variables. So the H stands for the ending height of the object, so where would this thing ends up? The T stands for time, typically in seconds. Your V is your vertical velocity, okay? So that's how this thing is moving against gravity. And your S is your starting height of the object. Now typically, I use S because it's easier to understand, but again, some teachers will use H sub zero or Ho as meaning the starting point, the height when time, it's at time zero. So just note, depending on your teacher, what they use for their stuff. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this time, we're gonna, this time we're gonna scare an armadillo, <clears throat> okay? But this time he's not gonna be on the ground. So, a scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is six feet above the ground. We then scare the armadillo and it jumps into the air. It jumps with an initial vertical velocity of 46 feet per second. How long does it take the armadillo to hit the ground? Okay, so again, first thing you do when you're doing a word problem is you read the stupid thing. Don't do anything else but read it. Okay, so now the second time we go through this, now we're picking out all the information, okay? So here we go. A scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is six feet above the ground. So that's very important. We scare the armadillo and it jumps into the air. Okay, great, that's not very useful for us. It jumps with initial vertical velocity of 46 feet per second. How long does it take for the armadillo to hit the ground? Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so what we've done kind of demonstrate what's going on here is here's our armadillo, okay? Now, in the previous video, okay, we had our ground, like so. Okay, and what happened was, <clears throat> armadillo be walking along, oops. Okay, let me kind of separate these a little bit. Okay, so, <clears throat> what we did the last time was, here's our armadillo, and he'd be walking along the wall, do, 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 do. And then we would scare it and it would jump into the air and we would calculate how long it would take that armadillo to come back down to the ground. <clears throat> now, what we're doing differently this time is this time we're going to say, okay, in this instance, we're going to start the armadillo on a platform that is six feet above the ground. Okay, we are then going to scare the armadillo and it's going to jump into the air again <clears throat> and come all the way down to the ground. Whoops, he just went through the ground. Okay, <clears throat> so what we are calculating here is the time it takes the armadillo to get back to the ground. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so I'll kind of move all this stuff out of the way. Oops, okay. Now we're going to keep our little armadillo, but I'm going to move him a kind of the side here so we can think of the armadillo all right so here we go so let's get our variables we had the h we had the uh, t we have v and we have s okay so now ending height of the armadillo <clears throat> actually yeah ending height h is ending height now again we're going to be on the ground again so zero ground is zero time well, that's what we're gonna be looking for here, so we're not gonna do the time. Vertical velocity, I have vertical velocity of 46 feet per second. Okay, and your starting height, again, the armadillo was on a platform that is six feet above the ground. <clears throat> All right, so let's set up our formula. H equals, now since we're doing feet, it's negative 16 t squared plus vt plus s. 
All right, so let's fill in what we know. H, zero, equaling <clears throat> negative 16, T squared, I don't know what T is, so that's T, plus 46T, because that's our vertical velocity, and our starting height is six feet. <clears throat> now, if you remember from our last video, we used to get rid of this, but again, it's not zero anymore, it's an actual number, so I can't get rid of it. <clears throat> so let's go right to factoring. So step one, can I fact is one side of this equation equal to zero? The answer is yes. So now we can go straight to factoring. So let's take out our GCF to start. Always look for that, and we have to because remember, our lead piece is negative, you can't have that. So let's kick out the negative. Okay, now looking at 16, 46, and 6, I can take out a multiple of 2. That leaves me with 8t squared, because so I can't take t's because this guy doesn't have a t, plus 23t. The correction, not plus. Huh? Hopefully some of you are saying, whoa, whoa, wait a second, gee, that's not right. Because we're dividing this positive 46 by negative 2, it should be negative 23t. And then 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 3. Okay, so now I'm going to shrink this a little bit. Move it up. We'll leave our armadillo alone. Oh, actually, I'm moving it. Here it goes the ground. We'll move the armadillo down. Okay, so now at this point, let's keep going. So now we're going to fact, we're going to, again, put this in our big red balloon. It's our GCF. It's going to float away for a while because they all float down here. Okay. And then we're going to focus only on this. So I've got three pieces with a leader in front of the square. So that's either the slide or you're going to use grouping method, whichever your teacher uses. I'm going to use the slide here. So I'm going to multiply front to back, get negative 24. Okay, so I'm going to split this. Oops. Okay, let's do our PS2. So my product, negative 24. My sum is right here, negative 23. So the two numbers that make P, the product, two numbers that multiply to 24 but subtract to 23, it's going to be negative 24 and positive 1. Okay, so let's parenthesis this up. Now here's where we can bring the 2 back a little bit. Negative 2, parenthesis, x minus 24 x plus 1, but don't forget, since we did the slide, we have to divide by the 8, so divide by 8s. So we're going to have negative, uh, equaling 0, whoops, 0 is equal to, forgot about the 0, 0 is equal to negative 2, now remember we reduced this, x minus 3, and can't do anything with that, so x plus one eighth. And again, because it's an equation, I'm not gonna scooch the eight in front of the x. You can if you want to, but I'm not gonna do that because it's just a little more work to do later. All right, so now at this point, <clears throat> we're gonna pull the pieces apart, set them to zero, and solve them. So here, <clears throat> negative two equaling zero. Now we have to think about that one. Does negative two equal zero? It can't because there's no variable. Negative two will never be zero. So this is a bad answer, it's a bad squishy, we have to throw it away. Okay, now we go here. X minus three equaling zero. So I can solve this, therefore X is equal to three. That's wonderful. Now here, X plus one eighth equals zero. So I solve this in minus one eighth. Put one eighth. So x equals negative one eighth. Oh, come on. There we go. So those are our answers. But we have a problem. The problem is this <clears throat> one of these answers we can't have. Okay, let's think about this. Three seconds. Can it be three seconds? Absolutely. Because that means if I'm looking at my armadillo, again, I'll put in my platform again so we can demonstrate this. Here's our platform six feet off the ground and if my armadillo were to jump 
does three seconds after jump make sense? And the answer is yes. So this is still a good answer. We can still have three seconds. My issue is with the second answer, x equaling negative 1 eighth. What this says is my armadillo hit the ground an eighth of a second before it jumped. So the armadillo did something like this. It's on the ground before it jumped. Then in, so then it jumped up here and then came down. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> we were told by the beginning problem it was already on the platform. So you can't be on the ground to get up on the platform to be on the ground again. That doesn't, that's, no. Now the reason why, again, when we get into graphing this, you'll, it'll make more sense. But again, the reason why the, you're getting an answer like this is because of the graphs that these make. A quadratic makes something called is something called a parabola. Okay, so my arm the parabola does something like this, makes a U shape. Now the armadillo is on the platform at time is zero. Okay, we knew that when it equals three seconds, whoops t equaling 3 is when it hit the ground this way. The negative 1 eighth is when the graph hits the x-axis again or the ground. Oh, come on. Negative 1 eighth. You know, it hit, it's supposed to do that. But again, we can't measure time like that, okay? When I designate something as time 0, time 0 is here. We're not gonna go back to the future to come back here to then put it back. That doesn't make sense. But again, mathematically it says, well, your armadillo should have done something like this. But again, we don't travel backwards in time. We don't know how to do that, yet, at least as far as I know. I could be wrong. So this answer, we're gonna just throw away for now until they start bringing in DeLoreans, but that's a whole nother story. All right? so. In this case, it takes my armadillo three seconds to come back to the ground. All right, so let's look at another one. All right, so let's look, take a look at our next question. Okay, it said a scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is five feet above the ground. We then scare the armadillo and jumps into the air. It jumps with initial vert vertical velocity of 38 feet per second. How long does it take the armadillo to come back to the ground? All right, so here we go. First thing we do, we read the stupid thing, don't do anything else. Next step, let's start going through this. A scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is five feet above the ground. Starting height is gonna be five feet. We then scare the armadillo and it jumps into the air. It jumps with initial vertical velocity of 38 feet per second. How long does it take to the armadillo to hit the ground? How long? Okay. So H, whoops, I'm starting to do that again. All right, here we go. We have H, we have V, we have T, we have S. Okay, so if I'm drawing my picture out this time, okay, so here's our ground. This time, whoops. <laughs> Okay, so this time, my, oh, come on. You just don't want to play, do you? Okay, so what we're gonna do this time is we are starting with a platform. So our armadillo here, let me move up over here. I'm going to start with our armadillo, and he's going to be five feet above the ground, okay? So, so there's our, here's our armadillo, okay? So, okay, so here's our armadillo. He's going to be five feet off the ground. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to, he's going to jump again to the ground. Now, again, the key thing to note is that he is five feet off the ground. So let's fill in our information, okay? So ending height of the object, again, armadillo is gonna come back to the ground. Okay, vertical velocity, 
Again, I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, dude, it's 38 feet per second, so 38 feet per second. Time, that's what I'm looking for. And the starting height of the object, again, we were told this time the armadillo was five feet above the ground. Okay, so let's get started. Our formula, because I'm using feet, H equals negative 16 T squared plus VT plus S. All right, so let's fill in what we know. Ending height, zero equals negative 16 T squared plus vertical velocity 38T. And starting height of the armadillo is five feet above the ground. All right, so now let's start solving this. So again, does one side of this thing equal zero? Yes. So we start to factor. Now, GCF, I have to start with the negative. Okay, but looking at 16, 38, and five, do they share a multiple? Well, no, so I have to do one. Now between t squared, t, and nothing, I can't take t's either. So I'm left with 16 t squared minus 38t minus 5. All right, this is going to be a fun one to do. All right, so now let's multiply front to back. We're going to, I'm going to use the grouping this time. So again, here's our GCF. We're going to put in a big red balloon and it's going to float away for a while. Again, because they all float down here. And we're going to multiply from front to back. Okay, so we have 16 times negative 5, which is negative... 80. Okay, so now we're going to do our grouping. So we do our PS2. So our product, negative 80. Our sum, negative 38. So our two numbers that multiply to negative 80, multiply to 80 but subtract to 38, is negative 40 and positive 2. Okay, so now let me shrink this down. Oh, this is all a mess now. It's all messy now. Okay, so now we're going to shrink this down. I uh, know. Okay, and we'll leave our armadillo kind of floating down there. So here, here we go. I'll move them back over here for now. So now let's get our two numbers. All right, so we're going to do 16 t squared dash t, dash t, uh, minus 5. Now, as we said, the two numbers are going to be negative 40, positive 2. Now, we're going to group it up. Okay. So, we're going to do dash parenthesis, dash parenthesis. All right. So, from this first group in common, GCF I could take. So, it's between 16 and negative 40 is going to be 8. That's going to be 2 and negative 5. Between t squared and t, you can take out a t, leaving me t here. And nothing right there. Bella. Now, from, Switch your laundry. from the second grouping, again, between 2 and negative 5, I can take out a 1. Oh, my pen shut off again. 1. And between t and nothing there, I can't take any t's. And because I'm going to have 2t minus 5, which means this and this looks the same, it'll be a plus 1. Okay, let me shrink this some more. Okay, so now let's parenthesis everything up. So you're going to have 2t minus 5. Remember, what's in these parentheses here is our lead piece. All the garbage left over is going to be 8t plus 1. Okay, and that still equals 0. And now at this point, we can bring our big red balloon back, like so. So now at this point, let's pull this all apart. So negative 1, 2t minus 5, 8t plus 1. Set the pieces to zero. 
All right, now solve this. Negative one equaling zero, does that make sense? Can negative one ever equal zero in the math that you're aware of? The answer is no, so goodbye. Here, I gotta shrink this even more, my goodness. Okay, so here we go. So here we're gonna add the five. So we're gonna have two t is equal to five. Divide by two, so t equals five halves. Now again, no one talks like that. So five halves is really two and a half, which is also 2.5 seconds. And again, because we have a positive answer, that's okay to have. Now if I go here, minus the one, eight t equaling negative one, divide by eights, t equaling negative one eighth. Again, that doesn't make sense. Again, that says the armadillo hit the ground an eighth of a second before it jumped. That doesn't make sense. So we have to throw that answer away. All right, so our answer is it takes it two and a half seconds. All right, so let's move on. All right, I'm gonna leave the armadillo on the previous screen and let's move forward. Okay, a scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is 24 feet above the ground. We then scare the armadillo and it jumps into the air. It jumps with initial vertical velocity of 20 feet per second. How long does it take the armadillo to hit the ground? All right, so here you go, let's take a look. Read it again, pick out all the valuable information. So scared armadillo is standing on a platform that is 24 feet above the ground. We then scare the armadillo and it jumps off into the air. It jumps with initial vertical velocity of 20 feet per second. How long does it take the armadillo to hit the ground? So H, oh man, I did it again. H, T, V, S. Okay, so let's get our information. Now H is going to be ending height. Again, we're going to the ground, so zero. Time, I don't know. Ver, uh, vertical velocity, we're told, is 20 feet per second. And starting height of the object, he, the armadillo this time is 24 feet above the ground. All right, so here we go. H equaling negative 16 T squared plus VT plus S. All right, so here you go. Ending height, zero equaling negative 16 t squared plus vt vertical velocity is 20 feet per second so 20t plus our starting height of 24 feet above the ground all right so now let's start solving this okay so ending height so does one side equal zero the answer is yes so let's start taking out GCF. I can do a negative because my lead's negative. Now between 16, 20, and 24, I can take out a multiple of four. Now with my t's, I have t squared, I have t, but nothing here, so I can't take out a t. So I am left with four t squared plus, or correction, not plus, we took out a negative. So minus five t minus six. All right, okay, so now at this point, we're gonna have to factor this. So again, I'm gonna put this in, well, it's supposed to be a big red balloon, but it's blue. So it's gonna float away for a while and because they all float down here. And now we're gonna come back. I'm gonna use the slide again this time. So I'm gonna multiply front to back. I get negative 24. Okay, we're gonna split this, split this, make this go away. Okay, so my product, right here, negative 24. My sum, which is right here, is negative five. So the two numbers that multiply to 24 but subtract to five are negative eight, positive three. All right. All right, so it's parenthesis up. And again, we can bring this back now. Negative four, parenthesis. We can have x minus eight x plus three. But don't forget, since we started with the slide here, we have to, we have to divide. And again, 
we use this four right here because that's what we did our slide with. So divide by four, divide by four. I'm gonna shrink the screen so we have more room to work. All right, so we're gonna have negative four, parentheses. Now this reduces to just x minus two. This one, I can't reduce it. So again, if you wanna make it four x plus three, you can. I'm gonna keep it as three fourths because it's gonna be easier to use. And that still equals zero. So now at this point, let's pull the pieces apart. Negative four, x minus two, x plus three fourths. Set the pieces to zero. And solve. Here, negative four equals zero, doesn't make sense, gone. Here, add the two, x equals two. Here, minus the three fourths, so x is negative three fourths, which is, again, can't have that because that means the armadillo jumped three fourths of a second before it landed. Oh, come on. And, oh, come on, and D seconds. So my final answer is it took the armadillo two seconds to hit the ground. All right, let's keep going. All right, something a little different this time because of the fact that we're not going to be ending on the ground this time. So let's read the question. It says, you throw a ball into the air with initial vertical velocity of 31 feet per second. The ball leaves your hand at a height of six feet above the ground. You catch the ball at a height of four feet. After how many seconds does it take to catch the ball? Okay, so here's what's going on this time. And I'm not going to use my armadillo. Okay, so we're going to start. <clears throat> the ball is going to start at six feet above the ground. You're going to throw it into the air and come back down. You're going to catch it at four feet. Now, here's the issue. Our starting height, as we've, we've dealt with, is six feet. It's not on the ground, which is okay. Our ending height, that's what's going to be different this time. We're not going to be ending on the ground. Okay? But our setup is still going to be the same. So let's go read through this again, and let's set up our what we need to know. You throw a ball into the air with initial vertical velocity of 31 feet per second. The ball leaves your hand at a height of six feet so that's our starting height you catch the ball at a height of four feet above the ground how many seconds does it take to catch the ball okay so h uh did it again h t v s okay so our ending height it's not zero the ball is not going to the ground it's going to end at a height of four feet Time, well, I don't know. That's what we're looking for here. Vertical velocity, we were told in the beginning it's going to be 31 feet per second. And my starting height of the ball is going to be at 6 feet. All right, so since we're using uh, feet, h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. All right, so here we go. St ending height of the object, 4 feet. Negative 16 t squared. Plus vertical velocity, we're told is 31 t. Starting height of the object is 6 feet. Now here's the problem. Now we go to start solving this thing. Does one side of this equation equal to 0? No, it doesn't this time. So we're going to make that happen, okay? So I'm going to move this. Now, technically, we could move all the left side over, but it's easier just to minus the 4. So we're going to have 0 equaling negative 16t squared plus 31t plus 2. Okay, so now that one side's 0, now we can begin our factoring. So again, we always start with our GCF. And again, because my lead piece is negative, I'm going to start with a negative. Now between 16, 31, and 2, I can't take out anything, so it's going to be a negative 1. Between t squared, t, and nothing here, I can't take out t's. 
So it's going to be 16t squared minus 31t plus 2. Okay. All right, so let's start to factor. Now, again, I'm going to use the slide again. I find it much easier to use. All right, so you go. Let's multiply front to back. I'm going to get negative 32. All right, so let's split the 16 and the t squared, split away the negative 2, throw that away. Okay, so here you go. My product, negative 32. Sum, negative 31. The two numbers that multiply to 32 but subtract to 31 are negative 32 and positive 1. Oops. Okay, so now let's parenthesis up. So 0 equals negative 1, x minus 32, x plus 1. But don't forget, since we did the slide, we have to divide. Equals negative 1, and I reduce this fraction. x minus 2. x plus 1 16th. Not, again, I'm not going to move the 16 over. Okay. Now at this point, let's start pulling the piece apart. Negative 1, x minus 2, x plus 1 16th. Set the pieces to 0. Whoops. And solve. So negative 1 equaling 0 doesn't make sense. Throw it away. Here I'm going to add the 2. So x equals 2 seconds. And here, x 15. is going to equal to negative 1 16. 15 for the pile, 5 for your hand. Which means you can't have, jump, um, the ball didn't leave the, your hand a 16th of a second before you threw it. That doesn't make sense. So that gets thrown away too. So it takes it about 2 seconds. All right, one last thing we have to talk about is a dead drop. Now, a dead drop basically means you're not throwing it up into the air. You basically were holding it and you dropped it. It was a straight drop or what's called a dead drop. Now there is a unique feature that occurs when this happens. So let's talk about what happens. So, but let's read the question first and then we'll go through all this. You're standing on a ladder and you're painting a house. You are 25 feet above the ground. When all of a sudden you drop your paintbrush, how many seconds does it take for the paintbrush to hit the ground? Okay, so if I'm drawing a picture of this, okay, so here's the side of the house. Oh, I, stupid highlighter, I always do that. So here's the side of the house, here's the ground, here's the ladder, here's you. And what happens is you drop your paintbrush and it goes straight to the ground. You didn't throw it up into the air, okay, you didn't do that. You just flat out dropped it okay so when we do a dead drop and we're using our h uh, t v s okay the only difference is when it's a dead drop there is no vertical velocity because of the fact vertical velocity is describing when you throw something up into the air and defying gravity in this case Gravity is going to take hold of everything. So you don't have a vertical velocity or your vertical velocity is zero. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Ending height of the object. Well, the thing winds up on the ground. So zero. Time. I don't know what that is. Vertical velocity is going to be zero because it's a dead drop. And we're 25 feet above the ground. So H equals negative 16 T squared plus VT plus s. Okay, let's fill in what we know. Ending height is 0, negative 16 t squared, plus vertical velocity is 0 t, and starting height is going to be plus 25. Now, as we saw in the previous video, folks, this 0 t, I really don't need it because 0 times t is 0. It's just a waste of space. I don't even need it. OK, 
Okay, so I have this. All right, so now let's start solving this. So does one side equal zero? Yes. So let's start factoring. So I'm gonna take out GCF, start with the negative. I don't like that. So take out the negative. Now between 16 and 25, I can't do anything with that. T squared, nothing. I can't take out T, so it's just negative one. Leaving me 16 T squared minus 25. Now at this point, notice what you have. I have two pieces. 16 is a perfect square. T squared is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. And you have the minus sign. This is difference of squares. And again, if you don't know what you're talking about, you need to go back and take a look at the video on difference of squares to how to identify it and how to deal with the checklist. Okay, so negative one. So we're gonna break this into its square root. So square root of 16 is four and four. Square, uh, square root of t squared is t and t. Square root of 25, five and five. And we alternate our signs of minus plus. Okay, so now at this point, let's start pulling this apart. So negative one, 4t minus five, 4t plus five. Set the pieces to zero. And now solve the equations. Okay, so negative one equals zero doesn't make sense, gone. So here we're gonna add the five. So four t is equal to five. Divide by four. So t is five fourths. But again, we don't write answers like that because it doesn't make sense to people. So t would equal one and a fourth or 1.25 seconds. Okay, now for the other side, I'm gonna minus the five. So four T equals negative five, divide by four. So T is negative five fourths, which again, we can't have negative five fourths because this says it, it left your, it hit the ground a second and a quarter before you dropped it, which doesn't make sense either. So we gotta throw that away. Okay. So now, one key note here is looking at this piece right here. Okay. If you do not have difference of squares, you are gonna have to factor this another way, either by you're gonna to have to keep that zero, because remember in the beginning we did zero t. If it is not difference of squares, you're gonna to have to put that back in and then probably use slider grouping method in order to factor this. But just keep that in mind. So if you get to a point where, well, it's not difference of squares, it can't be done. It can, it's just you can't use it using difference of squares. You have to use the slider grouping or whatever method you know, okay? All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot, and I will see you in the next video.